Hey guys welcome back to our channel. So in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto joined Priest Squad and secretly fell in love with Wolpok, this is part 1, and if you want more then please leave a like share and subscribe, let's get in the video. Huh? Where am I? The boy with bright blonde hair wearing orange clothes glanced around the small room with blurry eyes. He tried to recall his memories, but his mind was a bit fuzzy. When his eyes finally adjusted, the boy found himself in a small dark room. Sitting across from him in the small space was a girl who was smiling at him. H. Hi. The boy mentally kicked himself for stuttering, but he couldn't help himself because the woman was that beautiful. Long silver white hair, with violet eyes and a heart-shaped face. The girl could only be compared to an angel and even a goddess. The girl's eyes had a hint of sadness in them. Hello Yuzumaki Naruto. Welcome to the world after life ends. I am the goddess who will guide your way, Eris. Eh? Seeing the confusion on Naruto's face, the goddess continued with an almost apologetic look. There is no easy way to say this, but your time in the mortal world is over. As if a switch had been flipped, the memories of the war began to rush into Naruto's head. Ah, so that's how it is. I died. Despite knowing that he was dead, Naruto felt strangely calm. Like he already knew that everything was going to be okay. Um, Eris. Can I ask you something? How did everything turn out? Did the war end? Did we win? Eris smiled, and Naruto immediately felt a sense of relief. The goddess radiated serenity, and it made him feel relaxed. The fourth great shinobi war has indeed ended. After you and your friend defeated Madara Uchiha, Abito Uchiha sacrificed himself and revived all of the lives lost in the war. That Rinnegan technique that Nagato used to revive everyone. But wait, how did I die? After Naruto asked that, Eris gained a sour expression. The mastermind behind it all, Black Zetsu, tried to take over your body after Abito finished using the technique and perished. Because you were so drained from your previous battles, it took your all just to keep Black Zetsu from attacking your friends with your body. Then you. Asked Sasuke to kill me, along with that Black Zetsu bastard. Naruto finished when the memories of his death finally came back. In a last-ditch act of rage, Black Zetsu was going to use his body to kill everyone that he held dear to him. If Sasuke wasn't there, Naruto likely would have had his precious people's blood on his hands. Leaning back in the chair he was sitting in, Naruto took in a deep breath. Sasuke was in a dark place, what with his claim of killing the current Kage and revolution. But the look on Sasuke's face while I was dying is all I need to trust that he will do the right thing. Naruto thought with a short nod, he had no choice but to believe. Deciding that he would place his faith in his best friend Naruto leaned forward and grinned widely at the goddess in front of him. Alright. I'm ready for hell. Seeing the goddess's befuddled expression, Naruto raised an eyebrow. What's the matter? Eris quickly stood up, a frantic look on her face. W what makes you think I'm sending you to hell? You're a hero. Hero or not, I'm a shinobi. I've killed people. Of course I'm going to hell. Naruto responded like it was only natural, because it was. No matter what the reason, killing was wrong. Naruto knew this and lived a life prepared for what came after he died. Eris sat back down in her chair. You experienced so much pain and loneliness in your life, yet you still believe that you do not deserve salvation. Naruto was slightly taken aback. This goddess was showing so much concern for someone she had only just met. Such kindness as expected of a goddess. Noticing the strange look on Naruto's face, Eris blushed and straightened herself. Well then, I have a proposition for you. I hope that you will at least hear me out. Naruto inched back in his seat and glanced at Eris suspiciously. Wait don't tell me that you're actually a devil that is trying to make a deal for my soul. Of course not. Eris yelled and stamped a foot, her ears burning red in frustration. Haha. Ha. Sorry, I was just kidding. Naruto sat and held his now aching stomach. He understood the situation he was in, but there was something about this goddess that made him want to tease her. He's a goddess, and you will receive divine retribution. Eris muttered with puffy cheeks. Sorry. It won't happen again. Naruto shouted obediently and sat up straight in his chair. Suspicion still evident in her eyes, Eris summoned a piece of paper out of thin air. In another dimension than your own, exists a world that is threatened by a demon king. Because of the demon king's attacks, fewer and fewer people want to be reincarnated into this world. To solve this problem, a plan was issued to ask people from other worlds who still yearn to live to reincarnate into this world, in response to the declining population. I don't really get the dimensional talk, but you basically want me to go there and kick this demon king's ass. Naruto asked, and Eris nodded. Yes. Should you accept, you would not only keep your memories and your chakra, but you would also be granted a divine relic of your choosing. An ability or a weapon with godlike power. That's okay. All I need are my two fists. Naruto claimed with confidence and slammed his fists together. Are you sure there isn't anything you wish to bring? Eris asked with a knowing smile. Naruto tilted his head in confusion when it dawned on him. Grama. How could he have forgotten the grumpy old fox that he shared a body with his whole life? 
So, without a second thought, I'd like to bring Kurama to this new world. Hurm that is if he wants to come with me. Naruto said while poking his fingers together nervously. After all, since he died, Kurama's chakra would have dispersed into nature and would reincarnate somewhere in the elemental nations after some time. The fox would be free, just like he always wanted. They had only just become friends if one could even call it friendship. Ara smiled reassuringly. I've already spoken with Kurama and when I explained the situation, he said. I've grown bored of this world anyway and agreed to go with you. Ara said while making a grumpy voice that must have been her impression of the nine-tailed fox. Naruto's eyes widened upon hearing this and he couldn't help but laugh. That sounded just like something Kurama would say and it was relieving to hear the fox wanted to tag along on this adventure. Ara suddenly snapped her fingers. Then, to Naruto's surprise, a brilliant light shined down on him and he felt a sense of weightlessness as he began to ascend into the HEAVENS literally. As Naruto was filled with excitement, he heard Eris's voice from below. Of course, there is a small chance that both of your existences could be wiped out while transporting to the new world. But as the goddess of luck, I can safely say that the odds are in your favor. Good luck. Hey, what do you mean our existences might be wiped out? Hey, answer me. Eris merely stuck her tongue out playfully, and Naruto realized that she must have been getting back at him for teasing her earlier. A cheeky grin on his face, Naruto waved to the goddess until his vision eventually faded to black. Uzumaki Naruto's next adventure had begun. Axel Town. Naruto opened his eyes and eagerly took in the view. He was standing in the middle of what looked to be a park if the children running around and playing were anything to go by. This place seems peaceful. Naruto thought as a pair of kids ran right past him. Wasn't the Demon King a pretty big deal? Eris did say that people were refusing to reincarnate back into this world because of the Demon King's attacks. Blinking in realization, Naruto shut his eyes and screamed into his mind. Hirama, are you there hey? Talk to me, buddy. Quit yelling. Of course I'm here. The angry voice of Kurama bellowed in the blonde's mind and Naruto couldn't help but grin. Sorry, I was just worried you might have changed your mind. Ka. It was either this or be enslaved by that accused Achiha you still foolishly call a friend. He so you would have missed me, huh? Love you too buddy. Don't make me regret coming here, brat. Kurama said with a low growl, prompting the Jinchuriki to mutter an apology. While Naruto was chatting with Kurama, some of the kids began to gather around him due to their curiosity, and the mothers then ran over to keep their children away from the strange grinning boy, with his eyes closed, who was standing on the middle of the park all by himself. But I'm impressed those self-proclaimed gods were able to collect all of my chakra and send the both of us here. They even managed to recreate a seal similar to that of your father's. Naruto opened his eyes and lifted his shirt to look at the markings on his stomach and found that the seal was indeed different. But before he could make a comment, he heard a few gasps. There was a group of children with their eyes being covered by their blushing mothers. Naruto put his shirt back down and laughed awkwardly. Maybe I should go somewhere else, but you should. After apologizing to the mothers in the park, Naruto ventured into the town. So, what should we do first? We're in a whole new world, no one knows us, and we don't have any money. So far, he had learned that he spoke the same language as the people here and that the town they were in was Axel, the town of beginners. He had also tried to buy a snack from a nearby food stand, but found that the currency was different in this world. Go figure. Looks like Gama-chan and his remaining Raya were nothing but a memento. Town of beginners care. They should have sent us straight to the Demon King's castle. We don't know anything about this world, so of course we'd be sent to a beginner town. It may seem weird coming from me, but information first, Demon King later. Karama merely responded with a grunt. I think I'm gonna look for that bar that we've heard about. Jiraiya sensei always said that bars were the best places to go for information. We both know the real reason that perverted mentor of yours wanted to go to those bars. You would think a library would be the first place one would go for information, but I doubt your dumb ass would be caught dead in one of those places. Not that I blame you, D that's harsh Kurama. Love you too, buddy. A tick mark formed on Naruto's forehead, but he was pulled out of his thoughts when he heard something crash next to him. He looked down to see a guy with brown hair that looked about his age collapsed on the ground under a few planks of wood. He seemed to have overexerted himself. Naruto pulled the planks off the boy who was gasping for air. Hey, you okay? Why yeah, thanks. I need to get these planks to the construction site soon or else the boss is gonna yell at me again where a dead useless woman run off to. Hey, I've heard about a good bar around here. Could you point me in the right direction? Naruto asked as the boy hastily gathered up the pieces of wood. The boy then stopped what he was doing before looking up, raising an eyebrow when he saw the shinobi's apparel. Those are some weird clothes are you a traveler? Naruto scratched his cheek awkwardly. Something like that. The boy hummed as if in thought before he grabbed something out of his pocket. Here. I'm guessing you don't have any money and I have a feeling you'll need this later. Naruto took the offered pouch and examined it. There were coins inside. Thanks, but are you sure? 
We only just met. The teen put the planks over his shoulder and snickered. Call it my good deed for the day. Treat me to a drink or something later if it's that big of a deal to you. But that said, the boy pointed down the street. Follow this road and take a right, there's a big building called the Adventurer's Guild. They'll have what you're looking for. Looking in the same direction, Naruto nodded and grinned widely. Thanks a lot. I'll be sure to return the favor someday. By the way, the name's Yuzumaki Naruto. Satu Kazuma, and it's not a problem at all. A good senpai like me has to set a good example for his kohai, Kazuma. Where's Kazuma? We need those planks ASAP. What is that skinny brat doing? Kazuma's face paled when he heard the deep raging voice that Naruto could only assume was his boss. I I gotta go. See ya. Naruto waved awkwardly as he watched his fellow teen run off with new vigor. Poor guy he must have it rough. After following the directions he had been given by Kazuma, Naruto found a building that was quite a bit larger than the surrounding houses. Without a doubt, this had to be the adventurer's guild. Taking a short breath, Naruto walked through the front door. Immediately upon entering, he was greeted by a passing waitress. Welcome. If you're here to eat, just take any of the open seats. Actually, I was wondering if I could get some information. Certainly. Just walk over to the reception desks. The staff working there will be more than happy to answer your questions. After thanking the waitress, Naruto walked towards the reception desks while taking in the guild's interior. Maybe it was because of his bright orange clothes, but he seemed to be drawing quite a lot of attention. Walking up towards the reception desks, Naruto noticed there were two stalls. One of which had a very long line while the other was completely empty. Naruto raised an eyebrow before making the obvious choice of walking to the open stall. Welcome to Axel Town's Adventurer's Guild. How may I help you? The receptionist with short brown hair and green eyes said with a glowing expression, almost as if she hadn't expected him to talk to her. Are these two stalls different in any way? Do you cover different topics than the other one or something? Ah uh, no, the adventurers just like to speak with Lunasan. The receptionist said with a wry smile and pointed towards the other stall to prove her point. Following the girl's finger, Naruto got a glance at the other receptionist and he immediately understood why the adventurers wanted to talk to her. Blonde hair, golden eyes, and large boobas that looked as though they would pop out of her shirt at any given moment. The woman was gorgeous. Looks like she has her hands full. Naruto commented with a sweat drop. Luna-san is like an older sister to us all, especially to the adventurers. So what brings you to the adventurers guild sir? Please don't call me sir it makes me sound old the name's Naruto, and I was wondering if you could answer a few questions for me. The receptionist giggled into her hand and nodded. I'll try my best to answer, Naruto-san. After Naruto asked some of his basic questions, the receptionist's eyes widened. You want to defeat the Demon King? Well, the best place to start would be joining this guild and becoming an adventurer. After all, Axel Town is well known for being the town of beginners. Naruto nodded his head eagerly and asked the obvious question. So, how do I sign up? You just have to pay the registration fee of 1000 Eris, and we can take care of the rest. Naruto gulped when he heard this, but quickly remembered the money Kazuma lent him. Fishing the small pouch of coins out of his pocket, Naruto placed a change into the receptionist's hand. Is this enough? Yes, that's the exact amount. 1000, Eris exactly. Did Kazuma already know he'd be joining the Adventurer's Guild? Naruto decided he'd buy the guy two drinks the next time he saw him. Now then, let me explain. Every adventurer has their own occupation or class. You'll register what class you want to be onto your registration card. The receptionist explained and placed a small index card on the counter. This will keep track of the monsters you've killed, as well as your level, skills, and experience points. Naruto tilted his head in confusion. Eh? How does it do that? With magic. Magic. The receptionist blinked. Naruto-san do you perhaps not know anything about magic? Nope. Not at all. Naruto said without hesitation and waved his hand dismissively, and the receptionist gained a troubled expression. I can take it from here. The woman named Luna said as she walked over to them, and the receptionist Naruto had been previously talking to thank the girl before excusing herself. As Luna gathered some things from under the reception desk, Naruto glanced at the other counter and was surprised to find the long line of adventurers were long gone. She helped all those people that fast. Now then, Naruto-san was it? Let me explain to you what magic is. Why yes. I'll be in your care. Naruto's head spun as the kind and patient receptionist thoroughly explained how magic worked in this world. Magic, which was this world's equivalent to chakra, was used by adventurers in forms of spells and magical items. Everyone generated their own mana over time and spells consumed it while most magic items didn't. That was the gist of what Naruto picked up from the explanation. Next, we'll decide what your class will be. But first place your hand here. Luna placed a contraption with a glass ball onto the desk, and Naruto assumed it was one of the magical items she had been talking about. Placing his hand onto the orb, it began to glow as energy visibly spun around the gear-like parts. 
a stream of magic beamed down to the registration card that had been placed below the magic item, and Naruto was surprised when letters began to appear. Whoa. Naruto whispered in awe as he witnessed magic for the first time. The receptionist grabbed the card when the magic item stopped writing and began to look over the information. Let's see what your stats are. This is. Naruto was about to ask what was written on the card when the Luna stared at him with a look wonder. Your stats are amazing. Above average across the board and ridiculously high luck. Though your intelligence is about average. The girl exclaimed while mumbling the last bit with a slight hint of disappointment. Naruto didn't really understand, but it sounded like he was being praised, so he rubbed the back of his head and grinned sheepishly. Wait, did she say his intelligence was about average? What was that supposed to mean? No way, did we just get another golden rookie? Not just a Quachan, but two golden rookies. We sure are lucky this week. Bless Eris. Naruto looked around when a crowd began to gather around him. Nervous from the sudden attention, he quickly looked back at the excited receptionist who was still looking at his adventurer's card and all. What does this mean? With stats like this, you can choose any of the advanced classes right away. Although I don't recommend choosing Arch Wizard which depends on the intelligence stat. The receptionist explained, while yet again mumbling the last bit. Boy. Naruto was about to choose Arch Wizard out of spite when the surrounding adventurers started shouting out suggestions. Be a sword master. No way, this guy's aura is screaming crusader. I don't know, the world could always use another arch priest. Trying his best to ignore the noisy audience, Naruto leaned towards the pretty receptionist so she could hear him better. Are there any limitations to each class? I'd pick the thief class since it's the closest thing to a ninja, but I just want to make sure. I don't know what a ninja is, but there are indeed limitations to each class. For example, a thief wouldn't be able to learn skills like intermediate magic spells that a mage could learn. Well, that's a bummer. I wanted to try learning magic, but if I choose the thief class, then I won't be able to do so until I change class A. I can't think with all these people shouting. Naruto was about to tell the adventurers to shut it when he heard Luna speak again. There is also the adventurers class that can learn skills from all the other classes, but with stats like yours, I'll take it. Make me an adventurer please. The crowd immediately fell silent. Ha. Serves them right. Naruto thought with a mischievous grin as the adventurers started walking away. He heard them mumbling amongst themselves, some of them saying things like. Talk about a letdown and what a waste. But that didn't bother him in the slightest. Besides, the adventurer class may be the weakest of the bunch, but now he could learn skills from all of the various classes. So what if it took a little longer to earn enough skill points? He always had his jutsu to rely on. I see you could always change your class later. The receptionist said with an awkward smile, but proceeded to make the changes to Naruto's adventurer's card and ultimately hand it to him. Now all you have to do now is walk over to that board over there and pick out a quest, but I recommend forming a party first. Solo hunting can be dangerous, especially for beginners. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for helping me. Naruto said and took a second look at his adventurer's card. You're very welcome, Naruto-san. I wish you luck in your adventures. Naruto waved to the pretty receptionist and turned towards the job board to pick his first job as an adventurer. He wasn't going to bother creating a party since he didn't plan on staying in this town for very long. Yuzumaki Naruto wasn't a beginner in the slightest. He'd stay in this town for a week at most and do some quests and earn some money, or at least until he understood the way this world worked a little better. Later that night, a beautiful girl with light blue hair and blue eyes was arguing with a brown-haired boy in a green tracksuit in the corner of the Adventurer's Guild. I'm telling you Kazuma. I sensed a huge amount of demonic energy earlier today. But I couldn't find the source but I'm telling you, I sensed it. That's why you ran off Aqua, because you suddenly took off running, I was late to bring the supplies, and the boss yelled at me again. All because you thought you sensed something with your former wets it called powers. I'm not lying. Maybe it was General from the Demon King's army looking for me. After all, I am a goddess. As in now. They must have sensed my holy presence. The Qua claimed loudly while slamming on the table. The Demon Army General. In the town farthest from the Demon King's castle. Yeah right. It was probably a new player with some hacks like powers. Azuma said and took a sip of his beverage, a self-satisfied look on his face. In fact, I think I bumped into the guy after you ran off. I showed him where the Adventurer's Guild was and even lent him some money like any good senpai would. The H-R-E-A-L-L-Y who would have thought Stinjizuma would part with his money so easily. The Qua retorted while trying to sneak a hand towards Kazuma's plate while he wasn't looking, only to have it skillfully smacked by the other party. How rude. Don't call me Stinjizuma just because I refuse to lend you money. I was going to buy you that drink you wanted to try because I was in a good mood, but now I change my mind. Why? Besides, what if that guy wasn't even from Japan? Then that would mean you just gave your money to some random stranger for no reason. You could have bought me something with that money. 
Azuma stopped drinking and calmly placed his cup on the table. He then looked at Aqua with a serious yet competitive expression. Wanna bet on it? Aqua returned the look in full. Next week's rent. The two then shook hands, though thinking that they had already won. After a couple days of solo hunting, Naruto sat at the bar with a cup full of something called Neroid juice. It was what the waitress had recommended since he didn't want alcohol. Having completed a silver wolf hunting quest by himself on the first day, Naruto had earned enough money to rent out a nice apartment for the week. He then went on a couple more monster hunting quests to save up for the trip he was planning to take to the next town, his eventual goal being the Demon King's castle. The other adventurers appeared to be avoiding him for some reason. Perhaps it was because he chose the adventurer class to spite them. Or maybe they were wary of him because of the time that he had wiped the floor with a certain delinquent adventurer who had picked a fight with him when he called the head receptionist Luna-chan. Naruto shrugged as he took a sip of the surprisingly delicious carbonated beverage. So what if he didn't make any friends in this town? It wasn't something he wasn't used to and he didn't plan on staying very long anyway. Speaking of which, he had yet to see Kazuma again. Which was disappointing because Naruto wanted to pay the guy back before he left. I could always look for the guy, but what good would it do if Kazuma's in the middle of working? I can't just interrupt and get him in trouble just to say thanks. Naruto was pulled out of his thoughts when he felt a tap on his shoulder. Looking back, he found Luna smiling at him. Are you done with your quest for today, Naruto-san? Yeah, I am. What's up Luna-chan? Luna smiled wryly, remembering the uproar Naruto had caused in the guild when he first called her that. Not that she particularly minded. Naruto seemed like a nice guy and it saddened her whenever she saw him sitting alone. He had even completed a handful of durian quests on his own free will. A.N. Durian quests are the jobs that are avoided like the plague. It's named after a smelly fruit that tastes good. Lol. Whenever Luna brought up a durian quest around the other adventurers, they would quickly avert their gazes. So when she saw Naruto accept a durian quest and complete it, she immediately jumped at the chance to ask him to finish more of them. Speaking of which. Luna lightly clasped her fingertips together and smiled apologetically. Did I trouble you for another favor? Later that evening. Naruto found himself standing in the middle of the town cemetery. According to Luna, a larger than usual amount of undead were spawning. She said that it was likely the presence of a zombie maker, which was an evil spirit that possessed and controlled corpses. As the temperature began to fall with the setting sun, an eerie mist began to rise alongside the moon. The bead of sweat formed on Naruto's brow as he stood in the middle of the steadily increasing darkness alone. Naruto had dealt with zombies before, what with Kabuto and his usage of the reanimation jutsu during the war. But the idea of an evil spirit that couldn't pass on. Would he even be able to do anything about it? I don't have Shukaku's chakra anymore either, so no sealing jutsu. What? Are you scared of a couple undead? Oh of course not. This setting is just a little unsettling. Naruto thought just as he heard the sound of dirt crumbling behind him. Something seemed to be coming out of the ground and a hand broke free and reached into the air. Then another hand broke out of the dirt right next to him and Naruto stepped on it with his sandal when it tried to grab him. Like a scene straight out of a horror movie, more and more hands and eventually entire torsos began to rise from the earth. There's a lot of them, but it's nothing I can't handle. Naruto pulled out a kunai and got to work. He zipped through the undead that tried to grab him, all while chopping their heads off with precision. How did he know how to kill a zombie? He saw it in a movie once back in the elemental nations as a kid when he used to sneak into the theaters. Just as Naruto killed the last one, he heard a soft chuckle. Looking around for the source of the laughter, Naruto whirled around and spotted a floating figure holding a lantern. It looked like a skeleton wearing a cloak, only its lower half was gone as it hovered through the air. That must be the zombie maker. Having found his target, Naruto ran towards the cackling creature with his kunai in hand. The evil spirit noticed the shinobi at the last second, but it only had time to make a surprised screeching sound as the dagger went right through its head. Eh? Naruto blinked as he stared at the surprisingly expressive zombie maker, with it staring right back at him with an equally surprised look. Naruto began to sweat bullets. His kunai had merely phased right through it. Realizing that it wasn't in any real danger, the zombie maker cackled some more and flew right through Naruto's body. The cold shiver crawled down Naruto's spine. That was a feeling he never wanted to feel again. The Jinchuriki turned around and watched as the evil spirit flew deeper into the graveyard. This is going to be a long night. Why are we in this creepy cemetery? I'm tired from working at the construction site. I want to go back to the guild and drink with everyone. The Kwa complained as she was unwillingly dragged through the cemetery. If you have the energy to complain, then you can work. The head receptionist said that this would be a good starting quest for us as adventurers because you were an archpriest and I couldn't just deny a favor from that pretty one chan either. The Zuma said while ignoring the scornful look Aqua was sending him. The pretty receptionist had personally asked him to complete the quest, so it had to be one of those events that he'd been craving for ever since coming to this world. 
even if Aqua would technically be doing all the work. Besides, this is our first real job as adventurers. You're an archpriest who claims to be a G-O-D-D-E-S-S lol, and our opponents are undead. Theoretically speaking, this quest should be a piece of cake. W-A-H-H-H, don't wanna. I'm fine with just being a construction worker. Azuma's eyebrow twitched as he stopped to turn around and look at his companion, who had fallen to the floor and started rolling around like a toddler throwing a temper tantrum. You stop whining and get to work, you useless goddess. Didn't you want to go home the other day fine? Do a good job, and I'll treat you to that neroid stuff you said you wanted to try the other day. The Kwa stopped crying and looked up at Kazuma with a hint of suspicion in her eyes, as though she thought Kazuma was only saying that to get her to work. I'm not lying, okay? This quest has a pretty good reward, so you'll get your half, and I'll treat you to that neroid stuff. How does that sound? Fine. But what will Kazuma do? Surely there isn't anything a beginner like you can do against the undead. Oh, me? I'm staying here. I don't want to accidentally mess up your exorcisms. You're right, a neat like you would only get in my way. Very well then. I'll show you the true power of a goddess. But that said, Aqua ran off into the cemetery. Where did all those complaints from earlier go? Azuma thought before he noticed something on the ground and yelped when he saw it was the decapitated head of an undead. Looking around, he noticed there were more heads and bodies scattered around the cemetery. Could it be that someone's already here? Nah. After all, the pretty receptionist one chan entrusted this quest to me. Ahahaha. Azuma boasted before screaming like a little girl when a headless undead tugged on his pants. There's no end to these guys, and I can't hit that stupid spirit with any of my attacks. Naruto thought as he cut down another undead for the umpteenth time, all the while avoiding the evil spirit who was trying to phase through his body again. Who knows how many he killed, he had stopped counting after 50. Just how many corpses did this town have? If nothing else works, I'll just use Kurama's chakra and try using my power against such a weak foe, and I will mince you. Kurama stated darkly which caused Naruto to flinch, but the blonde quickly recovered and growled. Why? I can probably hit this thing if I use your chakra. Naruto thought as he moved out of the way when the spirit attacked him again. Sucks to suck, you stupid fox. Naruto looked for a place to hide so he could come up with a better strategy. Finding a spot, he threw down a smoke bomb and body flickered away. The zombie maker waited for the mist to disappear. Seeing the blonde's absence, the ghost chuckled and left to create more undead. But upon turning around, it froze with a look of complete horror. Okay weapons and ninjutsu don't work, and Kurama's being stingy with his chakra. What other options do I have? Naruto thought from his spot behind a large tombstone. He then peeked out to see where the zombie maker had gone only to see that it hadn't moved. Wondering why it went stagnant, he quickly noticed that a person was standing in front of it. It was a girl, perhaps the most beautiful girl Naruto had ever seen. She had blue waist long hair that was tied up in a loop at the top, and she wore blue thigh high boots and an extremely short dress. This woman's looks were clearly at the level of a goddess. She almost reminded him of Eris. But what captivated Naruto the most was the girl's eyes, which were a deeper blue than even his. They were calm, yet determined at the same time. Naruto was pulled out of his awe-stricken thoughts when the woman spoke. Forsaking the laws of the gods and raising the dead for your selfish desires. Naruto shielded his eyes when a bright magic circle formed above the girl's head, and he felt his heart skip a beat when he saw the already beautiful woman showered in a heavenly aura. This energy no doubt, that woman is. Kurama said with an annoyed tone of voice before he closed his eyes to get back to napping. The goddess. Naruto thought with a gaping mouth as he watched a girl, who was surrounded in a holy aura, complete her exorcism. As the goddess of water, Aqua, I lay you to rest. Sacred turn undead. The zombie maker screeched in pain at first. But as the light consumed its form, it gained a peaceful expression before evaporating completely as its old passed on to the next world. As the light faded, Naruto couldn't help but stare at the goddess before him in awe. The blue-haired girl let out a sigh before turning around and walking off into the night. After hearing nothing but silence for a while, Kurama opened an eye and noticed that his retainer was staring into space. You okay, kid? Naruto blinked, quickly snapping out of a trance. Wow, yeah. I'm fine. Naruto then stood up and came face to face with a transparent woman. Eh? Ah. The two stared at each other for a couple seconds before they both screamed. Wah. It's another ghost. Ah, ah. It's a delinquent shamelessly playing around in a graveyard. Hey, I'm not a delinquent. And I'm not a ghost. Naruto deadpanned as he stared at the brown-haired woman in front of him. Her skin was clearly transparent and he could almost see right through her. Without a doubt, this person was a ghost. If you're not a ghost, then why can I almost see through you? The woman looked like she was about to answer when she suddenly collapsed to her knees. Acting instinctively, Naruto leaned forward to catch the woman and found that he could touch her. Weird. H hey, are you alright? And why can I touch a ghost? I am not a ghost. Ugh. 
that woman that was here just a second ago she released an extreme amount of holy energy. I thought my existence was going to fade away. Naruto frowned as he helped the lady back to her feet. Ghost or not, he couldn't stand seeing a girl in pain. Is there anything I can do to help? Why yes I need I need. The girl started mumbling and caressed Naruto's cheeks, causing the blonde to blush. Eh? NWH wait. Naruto stammered when she started to pull his face closer to hers. What was she planning to do? They only just met. Was she planning to kiss him right here and now? Then, just as their lips were about to touch. I need energy. Ah. Naruto felt a stinging sensation in his cheeks where the woman was touching him, and he felt his energy being drained. I, I am so sorry. I thought I was about to disappear, and you so kindly offered to help, but that doesn't excuse me using drained touch on you so suddenly. The woman, whose name Naruto now knew to be Wiz, frantically said as she bowed for the umpteenth time. Naruto looked down at the girl with a grumpy look on his face. That wasn't why he was angry. No, he was irritated because his feelings had been toyed with. Unintentional or not, you don't just go around making a guy think that you're about to kiss them like that. I really thought you were going to. Huh? I, it's fine. I don't mind if it was just a little of my energy being drained. Naruto finally said to stop the poor girl from prostrating herself in front of him and looked around the shop he had been brought to. Apparently, it was a magic item store that Wiz owned in the corner of the town, and there were various magic items on the shelves. That much energy was nothing for Naruto-san. Wiz said and looked up with teary eyes. Though it was true that she felt a vast amount of magical energy emitting from him, even if he was concealing most of it. Yeah, it's fine really. So please get up anyways, I'm surprised a lick is able to open up a shop in a town full of adventures. Naruto said as he browsed through the merchandise. No one else besides Naruto-san knows my true identity, if people knew I was a lick, it would surely cause a riot, but I don't do anything that harms people, so please don't tell anyone. Wiz said after standing up, only to immediately bow again. Naruto sweat dropped as he thought of a way to handle the situation. This woman was honest to a fault, which was something that he wasn't used to dealing with. F for now, please stop with all the formal stuff. I promise not to tell anyone, okay? Wiz looked up and smiled brightly. Thank you, Naruto-san. That's sure. Naruto sat and scratched his check awkwardly. Growing a sudden interest in all the magical items, he grabbed an object off the shelf and showed it to Wiz. Hey Wiz, what does this item do? Oh, that. It's a potion that explodes upon being thrown or caught on fire. Naruto carefully placed the potion back on the shelf. What a dangerous item to just casually have on the shelves one wrong move and the entire neighborhood was gone. What about this one? Naruto asked after grabbing a trinket from one of the baskets near the front of the store. Wiz clasped her hands together excitedly. I just had those shipped in. That one allows the user to use a lightning spell. But it consumes a lot of magic and breaks after a couple uses. Oh, that could be pretty useful. How much is it? Naruto asked, and Wiz beamed. Doesn't it? It's 100,000 Eris. That's so much. Naruto thought and placed the item back into the basket where he found it. It was probably a lost cause, but he decided to ask anyway. Anything you recommend for a solo hunter? Oh. Naruto-san is a solo hunter. Then, I would recommend this. Wiz walked across the room and came back with a small wooden box in her hands. This is a monster repellent music box. You wind it up it before you go to sleep, and it will keep the monsters away all night. The effects only last for 12 hours, and it costs 200,000 Eris. Yes I'll go home. See you Wiz. W wait. Why are you leaving after looking at my merchandise like that? Wiz said with teary eyes and grabbed onto Naruto's sleeve to keep him from leaving. After promising the airheaded store owner he'd come back another day, Naruto retired for the night. The next day. Who was that girl? She took out that ghost that I couldn't even hit in an instant. Maybe I'll ask her to teach me that skill if I ever see her again. Naruto found himself thinking about the blue-haired girl he saw the previous night as he drank his new favorite beverage, Naroid Juice. What was a girl like that doing in a cemetery in the middle of the night? She was obviously an archpriest, and Naruto faintly remembered her saying something about a goddess named Aqua. But there was no way a goddess was here in this world, right? From his talk with Eris, he assumed the gods didn't want to directly interfere with human affairs. After all, what would be the point of sending people with powerful gifts to defeat the demon king if the gods could just do it themselves? Maybe that girl was a person from another world and sent here with a gift from the gods like he was. As Naruto was trying to figure out the identity of the beautiful priestess, he heard a low rumbling sound in the backside of his mind. What's so funny, Kurama? Nothing. I just find it amusing that you've become so infatuated by that woman who saved your sorry peaches from a ghost last night, H. Hey. I'm not infatuated with her. I, I was just wondering who she was is all and besides, you didn't do anything to help with that ghost either. If you only just let me use your chakra, I could have. Sure sure, whatever you say. 
Naruto grumbled to himself as he chugged the remainder of his Naruto juice in one go. This stuff really is good though I wonder how they make it. Naruto-san. Eh? Naruto looked up and saw the familiar side of Luna smiling at him, though her smile seemed a bit strange. Ah, sorry Luna-chan. Did you need something? That's okay. How did your quest go? I didn't hear back from you last night and I got a little worried. Naruto nearly smacked his forehead. He forgot to check back in with Luna to tell her what had happened. Because of that whole thing with Wiz, it completely slipped his mind. Sorry, but I failed the quest. Eh? Luna seemed to be surprised by his answer and Naruto nodded his head solemnly. Yeah, I couldn't hit that stupid ghost for some reason. Then this archpriest showed up and defeated it, but I don't think she even noticed me at all and left so you can go ahead and give the reward to her. Naruto explained while scratching his whisker marks awkwardly. Even though I went to the trouble of sending the both of you on the same quest, but I guess that's why Kazuma-san was demanding the entire reward, Luna thought before she sighed. Naruto and Kazuma had completely opposite personalities. That's okay, that priest is a member of the guild. I'll give her the rest of the reward later. Luna had given Kazuma the quest so he could meet up with Naruto. She had deliberately sent the two on the same quest because Naruto had been asking her about Kazuma and how he wanted to pay him back. She was worried about Naruto who was always solo hunting and Kazuma seemed like the closest thing Naruto had to a friend in town and figured that the two might form a party if they met up again. How they didn't see each other during the quest was a headache that Luna wasn't willing to figure out. Naruto's eyes widened slightly as Luna walked back to the reception desks. So that archpriest was a member of the guild then that would mean that the likelihood of bumping into her was high. Ha. Huh. Ignoring the noisy fox, Naruto gestured towards one of the passing waitresses. Another Naroid juice over here, please. Hey, did you hear? Apparently, that guy named Naruto is leaving town. Seriously? Must be searching for a challenge. That guy doesn't really seem like a beginner adventure, right? It's no wonder he doesn't talk to anyone other than Luna-san and the waitresses. Naruto frowned as he heard such things from his spot in the corner of the Adventurer's Guild. People were always the same, judging someone before they even got to know them. But that didn't matter since he would be leaving the next morning anyway. Naruto drank the last of his favorite Naroid juice and stood up. He really needed to learn how to make that stuff. Well, I better go tell Wiz I'm leaving tomorrow. The clumsy shopkeeper was the only person Naruto could really consider a friend in this town and he had been visiting the shop every day since meeting her. Luna had been kind to him, but even Naruto could tell she had mostly been using him to get rid of all the quests the other adventurers didn't want to do. But he knew she didn't mean any harm and wouldn't hold a grudge by any means. He had yet to see Kazuma or the archpriest that had saved him the other night, but Naruto decided that it was probably for the best. If he kept making friends in this town, then it would only make it harder for him to leave. Naruto was brought to this world to defeat the Demon King, and he wouldn't be able to do so from the town that was farthest away from the goal. Taking one last look at the guild hall he had grown accustomed to this past week, Naruto was hit by a wave of emotions. Despite him being alone the entire time, this place sure felt homey. After looking around the guild with a lonely expression, Naruto left Samaris on the table and walked towards the exit. I'm off. Welcome oh, Naruto-san. Wiz said and cheerfully waved to the familiar blonde who had just entered her store. It was still early in the morning and she was just opening the shop for the day. Hey Wiz. Whatcha got there? Naruto asked as he took a seat at the table in the middle of the room. Ah, this I it's nothing. I was just about to send a letter to a friend. Growing suspicious, Naruto stood and walked towards the girl who had instantly responded with such a blatant lie. H-E-H who might this friend be? I thought Wiz said she didn't have any friends outside of town. Naruto-san, that's too mean. It's true that I said that, but hearing it from someone else is how I know. Don't read the letter. After reading the contents of the letter, Naruto looked down at Wiz who was in Siza and fidgeting nervously. Wiz is the shop not doing well. I've been dealing with red digits this month. That last shipment didn't do as well as I thought it would for some reason. Wiz said with teary eyes, and Naruto sweat dropped. No. That should be expected when selling such weird and expensive items in a town full of beginners. Naruto didn't have much experience in business, but even he could tell the adventurers of this town wouldn't be able to use most of these magic items, much less afford them. That letter is for the bank to ask for more time I took out a loan for I thought I would make a big enough profit with this merchandise that it would clear the loan, as well as this month's red digits, but there's no need to worry. I made an order for an item that I know will sell. Wiz continued with a determined look in her eyes. WH what would that be? A set of potions that boosts one's stats for a short amount of time. But as a side effect, the drinker will become paralyzed from the neck down for a couple minutes. Eh stop, it's too pitiful. I'm sure the adventurers will make good use of these potions. Now then, I'll go make some tea. This girl is too honest, Naruto thought with a sweat drop as Wiz left to go brew some tea. If this went on, that girl would surely lose the shop. 
being one of the few people that had been kind to him in this city full of strangers, Naruto couldn't let that happen. This brought Naruto to one conclusion, and he stood up just as Wiz walked back into the room with their tea. I guess I have no choice until you get back on your feet, I'll help out with the shop. Wiz placed a tea on the table and looked at Naruto in surprise. Eh? And no, I can't ask Naruto-san to do something like that. You don't have to worry about me, I have a plan. Besides, I, I wouldn't be able to pay you. If you're worried about paying me, it's no big deal. I've got enough errors from solo hunting these past couple days to last me a month or two. Besides. Naruto sat and scratched his cheek awkwardly. I can't just leave a friend of mine while they're in trouble. Naruto-san. Wiz said with teary eyes before she grabbed his leg and sobbed. Waha. Naruto-san is too kind. W wo. That's dangerous Wiz. I almost bumped into the shelf with the explosive potions. Naruto said as he pried the brunette from his leg. Leave it to one of the only ties that he had in this town to keep him from leaving. Naruto had initially come to the store to tell Wiz that he was going, but ended up offering to help out in her store. Figures. Push over, shut up. Having decided to stay in town for a while longer, Naruto paid his landlord for another week's stay. He then walked to the Adventurer's Guild to take on his daily quest. If he was going to be helping Wiz for free, then he'd better stock up on Samaris. So he told Wiz he that would quickly finish a quest and then come back to the shop to help. You're too soft, Naruto. You shouldn't have meddled in that useless shopkeeper's business. Instead, you should have left this worthless town. We have a goal, remember? To show this world what a true demon is. Whose goal is that? Anyway, don't call Wiz useless. I don't know what came over me earlier, but I couldn't just leave her like that, Naruto thought as he entered the Adventurer's Guild. He didn't quite understand it, but whenever he saw Wiz, there was just something about her honest personality that made him want to help her. Maybe it was because she was so determined to help the adventurers in town with magic items. Well, it's too late to back out now. I promise to help Wiz get out of the red zone, and Yuzumaki Naruto keeps his promises. No. Eh? Luna blinked. Did Naruto just refuse to do a quest? In the short time that she'd known the man, she had come to learn that Naruto flat out refused to back down from a challenge. No matter how hard, tedious, or cumbersome the quest sounded. So to say Luna was surprised to hear that word coming out of Naruto's mouth was an understatement. Seeing the clear look of confusion on Luna's face, Naruto crossed his arms and sighed. There's a reason for this, but I can't accept this kill quest. Ah is that so? Luna said with an awkward smile before shuffling through her notes. Then how about this one? It's a fetch quest that requires the gathering of five Venus hearts. A Venus heart is the fruit a Venus flytrap produces after a long period. Naruto raised an eyebrow. A Venus flytrap. Did she mean those tiny house plants one kept near a window and closed their mouths when you touch them? Hiruka had one of those things in his apartment and would always yell at him when he touched their mouths for some reason. Sounds easy enough. Now, where can I find them? You um you can find Venus flytraps in the forest southwest of the town. But they are a very rare encounter and finding one with fruit is even more uncommon. Naruto hummed and thought. I see so that's why the other adventurers don't want to take this quest. It sounds like it could take a while. He planned to help Wiz with the shop later that day, and it was still early in the morning. If he hurried by using shadow clones, he should be able to finish the quest by noon. W well, you have a couple days to complete the quest. So take your time and be careful. Luna said nervously and looked as though she wanted to say more about the quest, but she wasn't given a chance when Naruto suddenly turned towards the exit and waved. I'll be back later, see ya Luna-chan. Luna sweat dropped when the other adventurers sent heated glares at the shinobi as he left the guild. Was he doing that on purpose? But she was relieved when Naruto said he decided to stay, even if it was only for a little longer. Despite him not getting along with the other adventurers very well, his tenacity to complete quests every day was having quite a positive impact on them. Hence the reason why the only kill quest left this season was hunting toads, since it was their mating season. Standing in the middle of the forest just outside of town, Naruto crossed his fingers. Age Bushin no Jutsu. In a series of poofs. A couple dozen clones popped into existence. Facing his small army, Naruto pointed towards the deeper parts of the forest. Alright everyone, you know what to do. Oh. The clones mock saluted before dispersing into the forest. Grinning in satisfaction, Naruto began to walk through the forest by himself. With the use of his shadow clones, this search quest was going to be a piece of cake. After a couple minutes of searching, Naruto slowed to a stop when he suddenly felt a couple of his clones dispersing. Weird most of the monsters in this area should have been cleared out by adventurers. Did they already find the fruits? Just as the memories of the clones came back to him, a dark figure loomed over Naruto's form. He could hear the bushes rustling softly behind him. Daring to turn around, Naruto came face to face with the largest Venus flytrap he had ever seen. 
the giant of the plant opened its jaws, and Naruto got a glimpse of a glowing object in the back of its mouth before he was forced to jump away. Landing in a tree, Naruto stamped his foot on the branch angrily. What the hell is this? How is that a Venus flight wrap? That's a goddamn man-eating plant. Figuring that complaining wouldn't do him any good, Naruto pulled out a kunai and channeled some wind chakra into it. Man-eating plant or not, he's dealt with much worse. The Venus flight wrap opened its jaws and made a hissing noise that sounded like it was roaring. Bring it on you stupid plant. Naruto roared back and pounced on the carnivorous plant. By the time Naruto managed to collect the five Venus hearts, it was half past noon. Luna-chan has some explaining to do. Naruto thought with a twitching eyebrow as he looked at the tears in his jacket. As much as he disliked the idea of wearing something else, he needed some new clothes. During the search, Naruto had somehow ended up closer to the western entrance to the town. This was the entrance Naruto tried to avoid the most due to the frequent giant toad sightings. Due to his pact with the toads of Mount Momboku in his past life, Naruto refused to kill the giant toads. Ma, Pa, Gamma Kichi, and the chief toad Gamma Bunta. He missed the toads he had spent so much time with. In fact, he almost cried when he saw fried toad meat on the menu back at the Adventurer's Guild. As Naruto tracked the open plain towards the town in the distance, he suddenly felt a familiar energy signature. Scanning area for its source, Naruto spotted a giant toad. Standing in front of the toad was. Oh. It's that archpriest. Naruto said as a wave of excitement washed over him. But that feeling died in an instant when the blue-haired priest was suddenly inside the giant toad's mouth. The qua. Azuma screamed as he ran towards the giant toad that had just eaten his partner. Stupid useless G-O-D-D-E-S-S lol, getting devoured right after boasting like that. But now that the toad wasn't moving, he'd be able to strike it and. It all happened in an instant. Azuma had blinked when he reached the toad and was about to strike with his short sword, and when he had opened his eyes again, there was a man shrouded in golden energy with strange black markings standing between him and the toad. The golden man's arm flickered, and a qua, along with the contents of the giant toad's stomach, erupted into the air. By the time Kazuma stopped and widened his eyes, a qua had fallen into the man's arm's bridal style, and the toad was halfway across the field. Ubla. Azuma was about to ask who the person was when he was covered by the toad mucus that had erupted from the monster, along with Aqua. Feeling a warmth that was different from the toad's stomach, Aqua fluttered her eyes open. Hey, you okay? Aqua's eyes shot open when she heard the stranger's voice and noticed that said person was holding her. The only reason she wasn't freaking out was because the person had such a calm expression. His golden features were bright like the sun, and his red-orange eyes had a warmth to them that made her feel safe. At that moment, Aqua felt as though she was being carried by a fellow god. Why yes, thank you. Aqua said and bashfully averted her gaze, her heart fluttering. Azuma, who had been watching the whole time on the ground while covered in toad mucus, tilted his head to the side. Aqua, the girl that was as obnoxious as a rooster in the morning, stubborn as a mule, and dumb as they came looked like that. Who was that cute girl? Where could he find one? Buum can you put me down? Oh oh. Yes, of course. When Aqua was on her feet, she didn't dare look up. Azuma, deciding he'd seen enough of this strange aqua, stood up and made his presence known by roughly wiping the toad mucus from his clothes. Thank you for helping us, but who are you? Azuma said, and as if noticing him for the first time, the golden person blinked in surprise. Azuma. Yes, I'm Kazuma. Azuma said out of reflex when the person shouted his name and pointed at him. Did he know this strange glowing man? What was with that glowing mess anyway? It's me. Ah. You probably don't recognize me in this form. The man said and the golden energy that surrounded his form faded out of existence. Azuma instantly recognized the person. Oh. Naruto. Naruto grinned when he was finally remembered. It was then. A-H-H-H. This energy I'm sensing a devil. Wah. The Kwa suddenly started shouting nonsense and pounced on Naruto. The Kwa. What are you doing to the person that just saved you? His words falling onto deaf ears, Kazuma sighed. Azuma. This person is a devil. Eh? No, wait, I couldn't sense it a second ago for various reasons, but this man reeks of demonic energy. Well, let me explain. The Devil King must have known I was here and sent this man to seduce me. It almost worked, but luckily the great me saw right through your trap. How dare you play with the feelings of a sensitive maiden? What? The Kwa, who was now straddling the very confused Naruto, made such outrageous claims. Almost. Sensitive. These were the questionable words that were floating in Kazuma's mind as he watched the scene in front of him unfold. What happened to that cute girl from just a second ago? I am not a devil. Naruto said meekly as he averted his gaze from the girl who was straddling him while wearing a very short skirt. His arms were being forced to his sides by Aqua's eyes, so the only thing he could do now to was look away. See. He looked away. That means he's lying. The Kwa roared and began to shake Naruto by the collar. No, he's looking away for another obvious reason. 
Azuma said with a sweat drop. He needed to put an end to this. Otherwise that idiot of a G-O-D-D-E-S-S lol would continue to misunderstand the situation and take things too far. What we saw was probably his hack's power. You know, the thing you said I could have brought to this world. To think, I made the mistake to choose you as my thing. Hack's power. Naruto thought with a raised eyebrow. Did he know about Kurama? First the initial fee for the guild, and now this. Just how much did Kazuma know about him? Listen Kazuma, continue to disrespect a goddess by calling the great me a thing, and you will receive divine retribution. Hold on a second, Aqua. I really am human I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth, I promise. Naruto frantically said when the girl turned her angry gaze towards him again. He knew full well what happened if you made a girl angry and did not want to make this girl an front top of him any more upset than she already was. Oh yeah. Well then, shall we put that to the test? If you truly are human like you say, then you won't be affected by my sacred purification. Azuma, who was about to smack Aqua upside the head, held his hand in thought. Usually he'd stop such a stupid test, but when Naruto isn't affected by the spell Aqua will give up on this nonsense on her own free will. No headache needed. Huh? Naruto said, not understanding what the girl was about to do. Aqua, who was still sitting on top of Naruto, raised her hand and said a short prayer. The same magic circle Naruto saw that one night at the graveyard appeared and an enormous amount of energy began to flow into it. Sacred purification. Azuma shielded his eyes when the holy magic consumed them all. When the light dimmed down, Aqua confidently looked down and expected to see a pile of ashes. But what she didn't expect to see was Naruto, very much still alive, and staring up at her with a mixed look of confusion and embarrassment. As if she just realized a position she was in, Aqua scrambled off the blonde and pointed at him with a shaky finger. I I don't know how you manage to avoid being purified, but mark my words Ak. Aqua held her head in pain when Kazuma suddenly smacked her. Alright, that's enough you stupid girl. Can't you see Naruto wasn't affected by your spell in the slightest? He's not a devil, so get that through your thick skull already. Naruto stood up and laughed awkwardly as he dusted himself off. Now that that was over with, maybe he'd finally be able to talk with these two normally. Naruto. Give me control of your body so that I may teach that self-proclaimed goddess the true meaning of suffering. Hirama. Naruto thought to when he heard the fox's demand. Come to think of it, he did hear someone shouting when the spell was being casted Kurama, being a demon, must have been affected by Aqua's spell. Aha. I can sense a great deal of malice coming from this man. Stand aside, Kazuma. This time I louch. Aqua started shouted obnoxious things even after all of that, so Kazuma smacked her on the head again before turning to Naruto. What was that glowing power? Did you get it from a god or goddess? Yeah, something like that. I have a nine-tailed fox demon named Kurama sealed inside of me, and I can draw from his power. But how did you know? Azuma nodded, a knowing smirk on his face. Aqua probably forgot about their little bet, but he would make sure to remind her that he won. This may come to a surprise to you, but I am also from Japan. I too died a heroic, comical, death. While Kazuma was giving Aqua a verbal lashing which ended up with them in a minor scuffle, Naruto tilted his head in confusion. What's Japan? Kazuma and Aqua, amid their little battle, stopped and looked at each. Nah, Kazuma. Does this mean I win the bet? Hell no. After a quick visit to the town's bathhouse to wash off the toad mucus, Kazuma and Aqua met up with Naruto at the Adventurer's Guild. So let me get this straight just like me, you were sent to this world by a goddess to defeat the demon king, but you're not from Japan. You do have blonde hair and blue eyes are you from America or Europe? Kazuma asked as he tried to wrap his head around the situation. Nope. Never heard of them. Naruto said with a wave of his hand as he sent occasional glances at Aqua, who was fiddling with a straw paying zero attention to the conversation. Azuma hummed and calmly rubbed his chin in thought. He wasn't the type to overreact to something like this, especially when entities such as gods and goddess were involved. Naruto said he didn't know what Japan was, so he was expecting the guy to be from another country. But Kazuma didn't imagine the blonde to be from an entirely different world than his old one altogether. But the possibility of the gods and goddess recruiting people from worlds other than Kazuma's home wasn't entirely out of the question. Where are you from then? The elemental nations. Naruto said absent-mindedly while watching Aqua work on the straw, and Kazuma clearly saw this. Aqua, pay attention and stop distracting Naruto. This has to do with you too. Don't want to wah. No, I'm not finished yet. Aqua wailed when Kazuma snatched the straw out of her hands, and she started bobbing at the boy's head comically. Naruto chuckled as he watched the two fight until Aqua somehow managed to retrieve her straw back. So I take it you're from this Japan place, Kazuma. Kazuma rubbed his head as he sent the priest, who was sitting next to him, an annoyed expression, then looked at Naruto and nodded. Yeah, but to think there really are other worlds out there besides my old home and this world. It's really just like a video game. Aqua stifled a laugh. 
as expected of Kazuma whose previous life was merely that of a neat, comparing the real world to a video game is hey. No, I'm sorry. Stop it Kazuma. It's gonna break. Kazuma-san. Kazuma let go of Aqua's strange looking straw before crossing his arms. He was getting sidetracked because of this dumb girl. If she didn't want to listen, then so be it. What kind of world did you come from? Naruto hummed in thought when Kazuma questioned him about his old home. I guess it was kinda like this world, but we didn't have a king, and we didn't use magic. We, ninja, use chakra. You're a ninja? Kazuma questioned incredulously as he looked at the blonde's attire. The guy was wearing a headband with a strange symbol, but with those bright orange clothes, coupled with his light blonde hair then there was also that bright golden energy power he used earlier. Nope. Kazuma just couldn't see this guy being able to stealth looking like that. Seeing the doubt on Kazuma's face, Naruto fumed. I am really a ninja, you know. I might look like this, but I could hide from some of the hidden village's top ninja when I was 12. I even stole the forbidden scroll of sealing and learned a jutsu from it in one night. Kazuma gained a sour look. He had grown excited when Naruto had mentioned a hidden village, but that excitement was immediately shot down when he heard the top ninja of the village couldn't capture a blonde child wearing bright orange clothes. What kind of ninjas were they training in that hidden village? How could they let something that significant fall into the hands of a child? Were they stupid? Kazuma was beginning to doubt the man in front of him. Was this person really from a ninja village? As if hearing the thoughts of disbelief in Kazuma's head, Naruto's ears turned red. But before he had the chance to defend his old home, Aqua held something out to him from across the table. Sorry for the wait, but it's finished. Naruto blinked in confusion, but accepted the strange-looking object without much thought. It looked like the straw Aqua had been fiddling with earlier, but the thing in Naruto's hands looked so multifaceted that one could not simply call it a straw anymore. W what is this? It's a straw but no ordinary straw. That straw is an ancient artifact that allows the user to grant entertainment while drinking from it. Aqua explained while nodding her head confidently. Ancient relic. Didn't you say you just finished making it? Azuma thought with a sweat drop. He wanted to retort but kept quiet since he was curious as to what Aqua had made. She was utterly useless most of the time, but this girl had a strange knack for arts and crafts. What does it do? Naruto asked as he continued to look at the supposed straw in his hand. Upon further inspection, it had the shape of a person, which baffled Naruto. The straw had only been a couple inches long, so how did Aqua manage to make this thing? If you foo order us some more drinks and find out. Aqua said with a gleeful look and finished rest of the drink Naruto had ordered for her earlier. After Naruto called for the waitress and had her bring them more drinks, he stuck the straw into his narrow juice and drank from it. W wah how is that even possible? Aqua, you this is actually amazing. Azuma exclaimed and looked at Aqua with a shocked look. Naruto's eyes were wide as well. He swallowed his beverage and looked at Aqua in awe. How did you make something like this? Aqua soaked in the compliments with a smug look of self-satisfaction. It's amazing, right? You can praise me more. When Naruto drank from the straw, the narrow juice gave it a yellow appearance, and they were able to see what the shape was more clearly. The straw seemed to be shaped like Naruto, and it looked like he was in his golden chakra form due to the yellow nature of the beverage. But something like this should have been impossible with a regular straw. Shaking his amazement away, Naruto put his drink down. Thanks for this, but why? To thank you for the drinks. Of course, that artifact is probably worth 100 drinks. So I wouldn't mind if you treated me to a couple more. The Kwa mumbled before adding the last bit haughtily. All right. Naruto said and looked at Kazuma, who merely shrugged. Aqua was a lot different than Naruto had imagined her to be. When he first saw her at the cemetery and how she had so elegantly purified the ghost, she looked like a kind girl with a gentle personality. But, boy was he wrong. Oh well, this Aqua isn't so bad. She may have a weird personality, but I can't really hate her for that. Plus, she seems to get along just fine with Kazuma. Naruto thought as he watched Aqua call for a waitress, and his smile disappeared. Kazuma watched Naruto's facial expression change from trouble to a look of acceptation, but then it went back to troubled again when Aqua told the waitress to put the bill for the drink she had just ordered onto Naruto's tab. Did he just accept Aqua's personality? No, no, no. That was no good. As someone who had spent an entire week with a girl, Kazuma just couldn't let his kohai fall into that trap. Aqua's the kind of person that takes advantage of other people's kindness. Naruto seems like the kind of guy who would fall for such an easy trap. So, as a kind and thoughtful senpai would do, I can't let that girl take advantage of him. Azuma thought while staring at the G-O-D-D-E-S-S lol, who was getting drunk off of booze in the afternoon with a look of disdain. She was even being treated by the person that saved her. Nah, Kazuma Hick. Why are looking at me like I'm some hopeless problem child? I haven't done anything wrong Hick. Yet. Yet. Azuma bowed his head slightly to Naruto apologetically, and the blonde merely tilted his head in confusion. 
After Aqua got sick from drinking too much and ran outside, Kazuma told Naruto that they would be doing more hunting quests for the guild and that they would probably see each other more often before chasing after the blue net. The reason they hadn't seen each other at the guild at all was because of the nature of the construction work that Kazuma and Aqua had been doing. The two would wake up at dawn and finish by sundown. Naruto stood up and was about to go turn in his quest from earlier when he was stopped by a waitress who was smiling at him with a smile that almost seemed apologetic. As he wondered why the girl was looking at him that way, he remembered the bill. Ah, right. Naruto grumbled and reluctantly pulled the heiress out of his wallet. The cost of the alcohol that Aqua had ordered was the same as an entire reward from one of his solo hunting rewards. That was the last time he was treating that girl to alcohol. You see brat, gods and goddesses are nothing but trouble. You should just forget about that woman and go to the next town already and leave Wiz behind with all that dead. Not gonna happen, Naruto told Karama and walked towards the receptionist's desk. H hello Naruto-san. Thank you for your hard work today. Luna cheerfully said when Naruto stopped in front of her desk. Of course. You can leave any of the unwanted quests to me, Luna-chan. Naruto said in a voice loud enough for the rest of the guild hall to hear, and he could already feel the heated glares from the other adventurers on his back. Luna's smile became a bit strained when she noticed the tears in Naruto's jacket. Oh my goodness. You look like you had a rough time all by yourself, Naruto-san. I remember suggesting that you should form a party. He had her on the ropes. Naruto rubbed the back of his head and laughed wholeheartedly. Yeah, it seems I underestimated those Venice flight traps. One nearly chomped my arm off. Haha. Ha. One final pull. Too bad my favorite jacket is ruined, but I guess it's better than losing my arm and potentially my lift. I'm sorry I didn't properly warn you. Naruto stopped mid-sentence when Luna suddenly shouted. Hey. Luna bowed her head and continued. I had a feeling you didn't know about the abnormally large Venus flight traps in this area, but you just left, and I thought you would be okay since your stats are so high. W wait, it's not a big deal, Naruto said in an attempt to stop a girl who was starting to break character, but Luna just kept yelling with teary eyes. But then I started to worry that Naruto-san wouldn't come back and it would be all my fault. But all I could do as a receptionist is wait here and pray for your safety. Naruto fell silent as the stares around him began to turn into scornful ones. Now Naruto-san probably hates this irresponsible receptionist who makes such dangerous assumptions. I'm sorry Luna-san. You don't have to apologize anymore. Naruto sighed as he walked down the street towards Wiz's magic shop. Luna had completely turned the situation around in her favor and Naruto couldn't do a thing about it. The power of a woman's tears was frightening. Walking up the steps to the store and opening the door, Naruto saw Wiz in the back organizing some of the merchandise on the shelves. Wiz didn't seem to notice him, and Naruto didn't want to surprise her while she was handling such dangerous potions, so he leaned against the doorframe to wait until she was finished. Naruto grinned when Wiz began to hum peacefully, the scene in front of him just seemed to fit. This clumsy shopkeeper may have atrocious business tactics, but she enjoyed what she was doing, and Naruto didn't want to see that happiness torn away from her. When Wiz was seemingly satisfied with her work, she turned towards the front of the little shop and jumped in surprise. And Naruto-san. Sorry, I was afraid you would drop a potion if I startled you, so I kept quiet. You should really get a bell for the door. Naruto said and pulled the table from the corner of the store to the middle of the room. Wiz pouted with puffy cheeks. If her heart was still beating, it'd probably be throbbing right now. Honestly you shouldn't tease a girl like that. We may look cute and helpless, but take it too far and you'll be sorry. Naruto laughed and took a seat at the table. I believe you. Now then, what can I do to help? Wiz smiled, remembering the things Naruto said earlier that morning and tapped her chin in thought. And could I ask you to sweep the front of the store? While you're doing that, I can tell you about some ideas that I've come up with. Naruto nodded and looked for the broom, spotting it behind the counter. Grabbing it, he started sweeping the front of the store. While he was cleaning, a nostalgic smile stretched across his features. This kind of brings back memories, you know. I used to sweep for an Asin shop for my favorite food when I didn't have any money. Really? What kind of food was it? Wiz asked as she grabbed a notebook she'd been jotting her ideas on. Raymon, of course. Naruto said with a toothy grin. Man I haven't had Raymon at all since I came to this world. Maybe tonight I'll ask the waitresses if they have. BH what's Raymon? Wiz said with her head tilted and Naruto face faulted. Supporting himself on the broom, Naruto looked at Wiz with a crooked smile. Um noodles, miso soup, you know. Raymon. The food of the gods. Wiz tilted her head the other way and hummed. MMMM. Nope. Even back in my adventuring days, when I traveled all over the country, I've never once heard of such a food. At that moment, Naruto's blood ran cold. He had been so caught up in learning about the world he was in that he hadn't even thought of the possibility. That this world might not even have Raymon. Wiz, oblivious to Naruto's twitching form, began to flip through her notebook. So, the first idea I came up with was ordering a specially made set of magic items. 
I know an arch wizard from the Crimson Demon Village who, ooh, wah, we can't beat the toads by ourselves. Let's recruit more party members. Azuma told Aqua with a serious expression. After a second attempt in fighting the giant toads, the two went back to the guild to come up with a better strategy. They had three days to kill five toads, and they only killed one toad because Naruto had knocked it out. Azuma had gone back and finished the job while Naruto was waiting for them at the Adventurer's Guild. Aiming a third party member was the obvious choice to overcome this obstacle. Leave it to me. If I make the request form, people will be lining up to join us because I'm an archpriest. We're in high demand you know. The Kwa said and rushed off to gather the materials needed to make a request form. Should I really leave it to that girl? Meh, it's only a party invitation. A Kwa should be able to at least do a simple task like that, Azuma thought with a short nod. It was better for Aqua, who held a higher class than him, to make the invitation. Because who would want to join a party with the weakest job of an adventurer? Bulk Azuma was reassuring himself, the guild doors opened, and he saw a gloomy-looking Naruto slowly walk inside. Naruto? What's wrong with him? Azuma thought when Aqua slammed her hands onto their table, shocking the teen. Azuma. I've really outdone myself this time. Just wait, people will be lining up outside the door to join my party. When did this become your party? By the way, you seem awfully excited about this. What happened to the whiny girl that wanted nothing more than to go home? But whatever. Why don't we just ask Naruto to join us? Kazuma suggested. Inviting Naruto into the party should have been a no-brainer. Kazuma couldn't exactly say they were friends because they've only had two conversations, but the guy did save Aqua. Because Naruto had a gift from the gods, it was safe to assume he was strong. Plus, Kazuma had been hearing rumors of Naruto being a solo hunter. So that meant he wasn't already in a party. Eh? But I already went to the trouble of making that invitation form, we should wait to see who answers to my call. The Kwa said with a shrug and drank from her cup, which prompted Kazuma to raise an eyebrow. That's a surprise, I thought you would be all for asking Naruto to join us. You like him, don't you? The Kwa spewed the contents of her drink into Kazuma's face. W who likes who how could a goddess such as myself fall in love with a mortal so quickly? If anything, I'm sure Naruto has fallen head over heels over my beauty. The Kwa stated confidently and gestured to herself, while Kazuma grumpily wiped his face with a napkin. Don't give me that crap. When Naruto saved you from being eaten by that toad yesterday, you were acting out of character saying t thank you for saving me all shy like a heroine in a girl meets boy manga. Azuma fired back with an exaggerated imitation of Aqua's voice, causing the girl's face to burn bright red. Girl meets boy. While Kazuma and Aqua were arguing, Naruto was dragging his feet to the reception desks. He was too engrossed in his thoughts to hear what they were saying. Rayman no more Rayman Rayman. Naruto continuously thought until he stopped at the desk and leaned onto the counter and tapping the bell to call Luna over. Upon seeing the shinobi when she walked over to the receptionist counter, Luna's eyes flashed with concern. Which was only natural given the state Naruto was in. The boy looked like he hadn't slept in days, which didn't make any sense since she had seen him just yesterday. His typically cheerful eyes looked dead on the inside, as if he had just seen the depths of hell. You um I was wondering why you didn't show up at the usual time this morning, what happened to you? You look awful. Naruto strained a smile. Do you know what Raymond is? Raymond? No, I'm sorry. That's okay it's a food from my country. But no one knows what it is, much less how to make it. I spent half of my savings on ingredients to try and make it myself last night and this morning, but all my attempts were so bad that I threw up five times doing taste tests. One was so bad I even passed out. I I see. Luna responded and smiled bitterly. This was a little concerning. No, it was more than a little concerning. Naruto was always bright and full of energy, even after completing hard and tedious durian quests. Just what was this Raymond stuff to him that had put him in such a state? While the receptionist tried to think of a solution, Naruto sighed. Wiz closed the shop for the day because she was going to visit the magic item maker she had mentioned, so Naruto had been searching for any leads on Raymond. This was the last place in town he could think of that might have his favorite food, or at least someone who knew of it. Not being able to stand seeing the normally energetic Naruto like this anymore, Luna was about to ask if there was anything she could do when the boy's face suddenly lit up again. Well, looks like I have no other choice than to make it myself. But first I need to regain the funds I lost hook me up with another quest, Luna-chan. H hi. There have been sightings of a rookie killer a couple miles north of town, but it's in the mountains, and the terrain is volatile. Surprised by the sudden change of emotion, Luna blurted out a random quest off the top of her head. I'll take it. In the mountains to the north, right. I'll hurry up and be back by tonight. Luna's eyes widened when Naruto made such a ridiculous claim. Tonight it almost takes an entire day to get there by foot, and hunting a rookie killer is no joking matter. Even with your high stats, it's still dangerous. I highly suggest forming a party for this quest Naruto-san. No way. 
If I form a party then I'll have to split the reward, right? I need all the money I can get for ingredients to make my ramen. Understand? Good. See you later Luna-chan. Naruto explained before he turned around and left, leaving a very confused Luna behind. Snapping out of her confusion, Luna ran after the teen. She knew Naruto wasn't going to back down, so she would help him out the only way she could. By giving him information. Wait. At least take this. It's a book containing information on the monsters around this part of the kingdom. Naruto took the offered book. Flipping through the pages, he stopped when he saw a familiar man-eating plant. There was an entire page of information regarding the Venus flytraps, and Naruto assumed the book also contained information on the rookie killer. Naruto sent Luna a flat look. This would have been useful yesterday. New members usually form parties with experienced adventurers and learn about the monsters from them. But since you've been solo hunting this entire time, Luna trailed off and apologetically clasped her hands. Naruto sighed and waved the apology off. It's okay, I already have experience with giant monsters anyway. Those Venus flytraps were nothing compared to some of the beasts I've seen. As Naruto left while laughing heartily, Luna found herself wondering just what kind of country the boy was from. Just as Naruto was about to open the guild doors and leave, he heard a familiar voice call out to him. Hey Naruto. Hang on a second. Turning around, Naruto found Kazuma and Aqua walking up to him. Kazuma was waving at him while Aqua was looking away for some reason. Perhaps they got into an argument. Hey guys, what are you doing here? I thought you would already be continuing your quest by now. We were, but the quest we took is a little rough for just the two of us, so we're recruiting more members, would you like to join our party? Kazuma said while averting his gaze awkwardly. It killed him to have to ask his kohai for assistance, but he was left with few options. Still, he'd rather swallow his pride than be consumed by giant toads. Naruto's eyes widened slightly before they went back to normal. Forming a party with these two sounded like fun, but Naruto had already taken a quest from Luna. Sorry, but I already took a quest for today and was just about to head out. Maybe next time. They ah, I see guess there's no helping it. Azuma said and laughed while rubbing the back of his head. He was just rejected by his kohai. No, it was only natural for someone powerful to reject a party invitation from amateurs like them. They would probably just hold him back in the quests. Kohai. Kazuma felt stupid for thinking that he was this man's superior for even a second. Naruto may be new to this world just like him, but if what the blonde said about coming from a ninja village was true, then he was no amateur. It was then Aqua stepped forward and looked Naruto straight in the eye, causing the boy unconsciously took a step back feeling flustered from the sudden movement. I guess I have no choice. Naruto, will you join our party to defeat the giant toads? Oh uh, no. Why would Aqua asking this time would change my answer? Naruto's words fell on Aqua like a cement block, and she dropped to her hands and knees dejectedly. And no, I guess it wouldn't. She got rejected too p poor fellow. Azuma thought and stifled his laughter when Aqua started mumbling to herself. Oh well, this outcome was to be expected. It's not like they were friends with Naruto anyway, and they still had their party invitation on the board. Aqua sprung back up with teary eyes. Why? I was the one who asked this time, so Naruto should have instantly changed his mind and accepted. Apologize. Apologize for declining a request from a goddess. W what but I already said I accepted another quest returning it would be rude. Naruto responded while putting his hands up in defense. He felt kinda bad about rejecting their offer, but what was this girl going on about? Actually, was this girl really a goddess? She had the same holy feeling to her as Eris, but she sure wasn't acting like one. Well I'm sorry I can't join you guys this time, but I gotta go if I wanna complete my quest by tonight. See ya. Ah. He ran away. Wait. Aqua said in a failed attempt to stop the fleeing blonde, but he was already long gone. My charms as a goddess had no effect. Azuma patted the girl on the shoulder. They're there. No. It's impossible for my divine charms to fail. He's probably just shy. Yeah, that's it. Poor man, he couldn't muster the courage to be in the same party as the beautiful and kind archpriest Aqua-sama. But wasn't it the other way around? Just how self-absorbed could this woman be? These were the thoughts in Kazuma's mind as he continued to listen to Aqua's little rant. He hoped the person that responded to their request wasn't as troublesome as this girl. A few hours later. Well, that was easy. Naruto said as he leaped through the trees in the direction of the town. With a bit of hustling, he managed to get to the mountainous region within an hour. A day's trip by foot in an hour was nothing for the son of the yellow flash. Finding the target had been simple enough too. The book said rookie killers herded mobs of goblins to lure in newbie adventurers, then attack the unsuspecting prey. Hence the name Rookie Killer. After finding a group of goblins in the mountains, Naruto killed a few to draw out the Rookie Killer. When the beast finally showed up and attacked him, Naruto killed it by knocking it off the cliffside with a single Rasengan. Then, all he had to do was cut off its fangs to prove that he killed it. 
but the teeth of the rookie killer in his shinobi pouch, Naruto was nearing the town when he heard a shout. Humming to a stop, Naruto scanned the area for the owner of the voice. He eventually found a woman with long blonde hair clad in heavy armor facing off against a silver wolf. She wielded a broad two-handed sword tightly in her two hands as she kept her distance from the growling beast. This woman was obviously an adventurer. Naruto debated whether or not to jump in and help. Since this woman was an adventurer, she was likely out here training. He didn't want to steal away her experience points by killing the wolf. Deciding to wait and see how things played out, Naruto leaned against the tree and watched. If the woman needed help, then he would jump in. The silver wolf decided to attack and rushed in for a bite. The blonde-haired woman slid her foot back in preparation to slash. Swoosh. Naruto raised his eyebrows when he heard the sound of the two-handed sword cut through the air from where he was. To be able to swing a sword that massive with that much speed was impressive. But the wolf managed to dodge the blade and charged in again for another bite attack. Swoosh. Swoosh. Ching. Arg. My sword got stuck. Ah. D don't come near me with those beastly eyes. Naruto sweat dropped as he watched the scene before him unfold. The woman had missed another couple swings with her sword before it became lodged into a tree. Naruto was no expert in kinjutsu, but even he could tell this woman had no swordsmanship. He must have been blinded by the speed she was swinging the sword to not notice the first time. When he saw the wolf close in on the girl and she had yet to pull her sword from the tree, Naruto moved out. No. Stay back you foul beast. Damn it. If only my sword hadn't gotten stuck, then I could have avoided being ravished by this beast. What? Naruto thought as he landed on top of the silver wolf's head, killing it instantly. He then looked up at the girl who had just braced herself to be attacked and found a small smile creeping on her mouth. The woman opened her eyes when the attack never came and saw Naruto staring at her. Naruto scratched his cheek awkwardly. You um were you smiling just now? No, I wasn't. She denied it. Naruto sent his fellow blonde a flat look. Yes, you were. I saw you smiling when I jumped in. Thank you for helping me. I was in quite a pinch there. Who knows what might have happened if you hadn't been around. She changed the subject. Naruto thought with a sweat drop as the woman finally pried her sword from the tree with a minimal effort. Was that sword actually stuck? I was on my way back from a quest when I heard your shouting. Were you out here training? Sorry if I took your kill. Yes, I was training with a friend. We were supposed to be heading back to the Adventurer's Guild when we got separated and I was attacked by that silver wolf. My name is Darkness, what is your name? My name is Naruto so are you a beginner adventurer? Naruto asked the now named Darkness while laying the woman's sword. Darkness seemed to have noticed his stares and blushed. Although I am ashamed to say, my swordplay is close to non-existent, but my defense is second to none. I hold the holy vanguard job of crusader. Ah, so I was spot on. Naruto thought as Darkness rambled on about her defenses. She seemed like a nice girl, but there was something about that smile Naruto saw earlier that bugged him. Who smiled when they were about to get bitten by a wolf? Did she have a secret plan that he didn't notice? Deciding it would be better not to delve on it, Naruto angled himself towards the town. Well, it was nice meeting you Darkness. But I gotta get back to the guild and turn in my quest. Ah, yes of course. S sorry for keeping you for so long. Perhaps we'll see each other at the guild. Darkness stuttered and tapped her fingers together nervously. Naruto raised an eyebrow at this. Why was she nervous? Was this girl not used to talking to other people? This must be what people called an uncivilized person. Putting on a cheeky grin, Naruto gave the girl a thumbs up. Sure. If you see me, just give me a shout. See you darkness. Naruto said and took off towards the town to surprise a specific receptionist with his record timing once again. Darkness watched the friendly shinobi until he was out of sight. Naruto, huh? What a nice person. How disappointing. He didn't even ask for anything in return for saving me. The least he could have done was ask for money, and when I would say I don't have any money and as there was any other way I could pay him back. He would look at my body with lecherous eyes and say how about you pay me back with that slutty body of yours. But that man didn't so much as look at my boobas. Darkness yelled with a dangerous smile plastered all over her face, panting a few times between sentences. It was then she heard someone cough. Whirling around with red cheeks, her entire face turned crimson when she saw her white-haired friend. See Chris. How much did you hear? All of it. I always knew Darkness was an uncivilized person, but someone you just met. In the middle of the forest. Uh. You're mistaken, and D don't say it like that. Darkness said with teary eyes, and Chris stuck her tongue out playfully. Just kidding. So, who was that guy? His name was Naruto he's an adventurer, like us. Naruto huh? Chris said with a knowing smile. Noticing the look on her friend's face, Darkness raised an eyebrow. Do you know him? Chris scratched the scar on her left cheek. No but I've heard a couple rumors floating around town that he's a bit of a player. They say he's always flirting with the head receptionist at the guild and that he's already seduced the owner of a magic item shop. 
I see, but those rumors are surely false. Although I only just met him, that man doesn't seem like the type that shamelessly plays with a woman's heart. Oh h o, perhaps Darkness has already fallen prey to Naruto the player after all. Chris cooed and looked at Darkness with a playful smirk making the female knight blush. Oh of course not. How could I fall for someone who only looks at me in the eyes? Isn't that a good thing to do? Chris thought with a sweat drop as Darkness pouted. Well, I think we should start heading back, boom. A sudden tremor violently shook the ground, threatening to knock the two girls off their feet. WW what was that? There was an explosion over there. Chris said and pointed towards the town. A large cloud of smoke could be seen just outside of the town's walls. Hey. Wasn't that the direction Naruto went? Darkness said when she realized the explosion was in the same direction the boy had run off to. The two girls looked at each other and gulped. Was Naruto okay? That's it for today guys, hope you liked this video, if you do please leave a like share and subscribe, so thanks for watching guys, take care bye.